22 kilometers from the town of Moran Bay, St. Thomas capital, is the town of Bath in southeast Jamaica. It is named after the British city of the same name. Bath Fountain and Bath Botanical Gardens are located in the town of Bath. Welcome back to Elite Jamaica, the place you come to learn about Jamaica and Jamaicans. If it's your first time joining me here, consider subscribing to the channel by clicking that red subscribe button. And do remember to turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon so you never miss any of my updates. Tradition widely held by local residents ascribes the actual discovery of the springs to a runaway slave, Jacob, who had been suffering from bed ulcers on his legs. The story goes that while hiding from his master in the wilderness of the Sulphur River Gorge, Jacob accidentally came across hot water gushing from a rock and collecting in a pool below. Finding the water much to his liking, he frequently returned to the pool to soak his entire body in it. After doing this for some time, he noticed that much to his astonishment and delight, his long-standing ulcers were healed. Having been cured, the slave braved the wrath of his master, Colonel Stanton, and returned to him and reported the discovery of the magical healing properties of the water. In 1699, Colonel Stanton sold the springs and the adjoining 1,130 acres of land to the government and got the sum of £400. By the early 1720s, the springs were already in public use and were attracting an increasing number of visitors from all parts of the island who came to make use of the curative properties of the water. People of wealth began establishing residences in and around Bath of St. Thomas the Apostle and the town of Bath sprang up at a site about half miles south of the springs. The therapeutic value and healing properties of these waters are well known and have been referred to by a number of authors in the past. Since the establishment of the baths, thousands of people suffering from gout, rheumatism, disorder of the stomach, fever, and various kinds of skin diseases have derived tremendous benefits from the waters. Research has shown that for maximum benefits, the water should be ingested and the body infused, soaked, in the water for a period of approximately 20 minutes. Bath Village is built on the banks of the Plantain Garden River, the only stream in Jamaica which flows from west to east. The village is located in the interior of St. Thomas. Bath owes its origin in the early 18th century to the discovery and the development of the spring. Hot water baths became very fashionable, and the village of Bath began to expand rapidly and soon became a notable and exclusive retreat for ailing whites that journeyed to Jamaica from the United Kingdom and other European countries. Many persons of fortune bought lots and began to erect townhouses. The square was soon adorned with a hospital, a public lodging house, a billiard room. It became the fashion every year for a crowd of company, socialites, to assemble there for all quarters of the island and abroad. At night, gaiety was in abundance. The powers of music were ever present and the card tables were not idle. In short, from a destitute and desolate rural area, Bath grew into a rendezvous for the polite and social amusements for the most privileged. Bath also became a buccaneer weekend playground for the likes of Captain Sir Henry Morgan and his gambling cohorts who in amorous indulgence visited Bath often whenever in Jamaica. Many writers of this time claim that within the Jamaican plantocracy, Bath was a necessity where both ladies and gentlemen of the wealthy and elite got the opportunity to partake in the splendor as well as the general overindulgence in food and drinks. Just to let you know guys that this building that we found here, which I did not know what this building was, this was actually the Bath Courthouse, right? and this building was built in 1679. Okay guys, so that's the information about this building right here. Bath Botanical Gardens Bath Botanical Garden, the second oldest botanical garden in the Western Hemisphere, was established in 1779. Many of the plants introduced to Jamaica were first brought to this garden. Among them are cinnamon, mango, jackfruit, croton, jacaranda, and bougainvillea. The most important plant ever introduced in this garden was the breadfruit. Yeah guys, we're about to find that breadfruit tree I was telling you about guys, the one that 
Breadfruit Blight brought to Jamaica, I'm going to be typing his right name, his correct name on screen and uh, y'all can go back to that video, I'm going to share that in the comment section in the description down below the history of the breadfruit tree and uh, yeah, we are trying to find the first breadfruit tree that was planted in Jamaica That one over there? The one of Ben and that one? Okay. Yeah, guys. So that, as they say, was the first breadfruit tree planted in Jamaica. And this was planted by Breadfruit Blight when he brought the breadfruit plant to Jamaica. And there's the other one. Okay, no, you can't plant one alone, you have to plant two or three. Where the other one? This. Okay. Yeah, peeps. This is really fascinating history. I told you guys about this the other day. I'm a really come come see it for myself. Like, seriously. Yeah, guys, that's the other one. Here at the Bath Botanical Gardens. Yeah, peeps. Really an interesting feature of history. Hmm? Oh, that one was planted by Portia Simpson Miller. Once a Prime Minister of Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah, peeps. So that's a part of our history here in Bath. Alright. The garden is much smaller today than when it was first established in 1779 and bears little trace of its former glory. There is, however, a fine stand of royal palms and a most splendid tree called Barrington Spicosa. There is also screw pine with stilt roots, which were among the plants on board a French ship that was captured by the flora in 1782, a ship in Lord Rodney's squadron at the Battle of the Saintes, St. Lucia, the final Anglo-French battle in the Caribbean. Adjacent to the Bath Methodist Church, on your right and directly across from the garden, is a small access road leading up to the Bath Fountain, Hotel and Spa. The distance is short but due to the poor road conditions, expect about 10 minutes drive. Parking is available at the end of the road outside the hotel's premises. If you are heading to the natural spring at its source, follow the path on your left. It will take you across a bridge, then a muddy path, but it's easy to follow once you are careful. You'll know you have reached when you come across this shop with a rasta selling treats and meals cooked on site over wood or charcoal fire, as well as this very rustic uh, changing room. Your things will be fine on a large rock in the water or the ledge in the corner. Unfortunately, Bath has a reputation of hustlers lurking along the street, looking to pounce upon visitors and very convincingly getting them to agree to a massage then charging exorbitant prices afterwards. I found that story to be partly true. For those unfamiliar with the Jamaican forward or persuasive manner, the nature of the amateur masseurs and masseuses must seem frightening and even interpreted as harassment. If Bath were run like an establishment, the correct way of doing things would be welcoming signs, arrows to indicate you're on the right track every few paces, maybe even a tour guide or two, and standardized prices for various massages and durations mounted on a poster for all visitors to see. The masseurs and masseuses would be properly trained and attired with no jostling for clients. I'm not sure under whose jurisdiction such regulation would fall. Maybe the constituency's member of parliament or the St. Thomas Parish Council. This would solve the problems many tourists have with the place, bring more visitors and increase revenue. But clearly, no one is interested enough to develop the attraction. A friendly but firm no and false promise of not today, next time, was enough to get any group left alone. So you be the judge of which experience to get. The hotel. Pros. Zero harassment. Overnight accommodation. Standardized prices for all guests. Availability of proper facilities like changing rooms. Cons. More. Much more expensive than the outdoor experience. The mineral water is pumped into regular bathtubs so the natural relaxing vibe that can be had outside at the water source gets missed. The outdoor free experience. Pros. Beautiful environment, getting to see and feel the beauty and temperature of the water straight from the rocks. Cons, harassment is very possible. 
Very, very rudimentary facilities available. No restrooms. Prices aren't standardized. And left up to your bargaining skills. I could pay, example, $6,500. While your superior bargaining earns you a massage for $2,500 at the same duration. Blessings, everyone. And uh, thanks for watching once again. I really do hope you found this video informative or you enjoyed uh, this video. If so, please do remember that you can subscribe to Elite Jamaica, it's free of cost. And do remember to turn on notification by clicking the bell icon, so you never miss any of my updates. Until we meet again here on Elite Jamaica, just want to say, stay blessed.